Here for chapter 6, we're looking at cash payments, meaning cash going out, and cash receipts, cash coming in. The cash payments is a result of our purchasing inventory. The cash receipts then would be a follow-up where we sold that inventory. So our learning objectives, as shown on page 223, we're going to be processing those cash payments, meaning cash going out. Process the cash receipts, cash coming in, and prepare a recon reconciliation of the checking account. And that bank reconciliation will be one of the pieces that uh, I'll be doing some review for. Uh, I want to shift from here. Um, it, it pops under credit memo. I opened a superior tile company. Uh, here in Sage and wanted to point out that for your customers, well first it starts with the vendors and purchases where we are processing those cash payments. Well the the actual invoice where we make a purchase was uh, done in our entering those bills and now we can pay those bills. So that's one option that we have for taking care of those. So I'm just going to click on this with paying the bill and up here is the vendor ID or the customer ID. Sometimes that payment would be a reimbursement for our customer and uh, here it has it that it's going to be a for, for a vendor. So these are the vendors that are on file at this point. I'm just going to pick one. Uh, the date for that uh, check would be here. And for this, our check numbers can be automatic. Uh, otherwise, we will enter in exactly what they tell us for those. Now, I have two tabs here. One is to apply to expenses, where we're writing a check for our rent expense. Well, another option is if we have an invoice. So let me see if I can find one of these vendors that has an invoice. But otherwise, uh, what we would be doing is selecting a vendor that has a balance that is owed. So as we see here, um, this with our OFF.003. And so we would put in here the amount that we're paying and then click pay. So uh, with that, it just sets it up so automatic for us but we need to tap the resources that are already into our computer so that we can take that full circle from where we have an invoice where we entered that invoice in and now we are paying that. All right, now I'm going to take it back to our customers and sales. So cash comes in from our customer. Again, we're tapping that to an invoice. And here are some invoices that are on file. And I just wanted to um, show, and I should have opened a different file. Oh, here's this one will work. Um, this one shows that they still owe us money. So uh, with this, let's head back and see the screen for our receiving that money. And we're receiving it from a customer. So um, in here, I didn't remember the customer. Oh, here we go. Uh, we have two choices again. We can either apply that to an invoice or apply to our revenues. Thinking of a cash sale, we could apply to our revenues. Or if we had a credit card that we received that payment method, something other than a check from our customer. And that it was not being applied to a specific invoice. Right here we have one. So I'm going to click on and then we can apply. If we don't want to do the entire $5,000, I can designate for 5000 or 4000 or 3000 so that's how we're going to be working through these with our cash 
going out where we're paying our bills and we're tapping that as our internal control back to an invoice of some kind or a bill of some kind. And the same with our customers where the cash coming in from our customers is tapped with our sales invoice. Now, one of the pieces that I had on here back in the PowerPoint was a credit memo. Now, this is actually covered in Chapter 9 on pages 372 and 374, but I think they sneak something in here, or at least they used to, in to an earlier chapter. So I wanted to bring to your attention that if you need to do a credit memo uh, for a customer, uh, perhaps look at those pages. Otherwise, I'm going to show you a really nifty here in Sage how I'm going to go back to the vendors because they're who we're dealing with first. We've got to have that merchandise. But if we have a return where we purchased something and it was the wrong color, it was damaged, we can go to that credits and returns and we can set up a new one. And who might this apply to? Well, we would pick the company and then enter information in, making sure that you include the date. Now, unless the textbook tells us specific inform information for you know our credit numbers and that type of thing, we're just going to go with it as recognizing that that would be one of the internal controls that a company would have. But that would create a credit memo that then could be used as we are uh, looking at paying our bills and it would show on our list for uh, applying that credit memo on the when we pay. For the customers and sales there also is this option right here for our credits and returns and so if we wanted to have a new credit memo meaning from our customers, they receive something from us that they didn't want, it was damaged, whatever. And so uh, we are creating this credit memo that it's a reduction to the amount that they owe for us. Again, you'd want to put the date that you're allowing that credit memo. Uh, and we can, on both of these, we can apply that to a particular invoice. So um, look for that information as needed for a credit memo. I wanted to go back here to the PowerPoint. And I wanted to point out that in reality, a credit memo is actually for our accounts receivable. and a debit memo is for when we owe those dollars. But here in our text, they're not using debit memo at all. They're simply saying credit the account. A credit in their terms means a reduction, whereas if we really think about it, for the accounts receivable, a credit to an accounts receivable is a reduction to the receivable, whereas for a uh, an account payable, we would debit that account to show a reduction in the liability. So I just wanted to bring that out. I don't know that you need this for Chapter 6, but I know that it does pop up earlier than Chapter 9, so I wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, whoops, for Chapter uh, 6, we have a variety of accounts. And this has our listing that we'll be using our Superior Carpet and Tile Company for the objectives and our Meadowland Healthcare Services for the um, practicing those objectives. So final item then, if you have questions or uh, problems, let me know. Otherwise, this should be previewed uh, before class on uh, this Wednesday, but then to uh, all the assignments need to be completed before our class on Wednesday, June 12th. Again, questions or problems, let me know.